Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. But here's the real deal, right? The Supreme Court was, was never meant to have the amount of power that it has today. The founders and the framers of the Constitution did not want, to, uh, want the courts to have the power to determine our laws. They just didn't. That's not what they intended the court to do. So uh, what they did want the courts to do is, is when, when you get uh, called the Supreme Court in is when the lower courts can't decide on a ruling between any of the states or between a citizen and the states, right? They're the first courts for international law, which means that realistically they should be looking at the Julian Assange case. And they are the final court of appeals when you sue somebody. That was the purpose of the Supreme Court. And the first three Supreme Courts did exactly that, right? They were pretty uneventful. Not, not a whole lot happened in, during the Supreme Court. Uh, there was like one case where a farmer had to pay off his debts. That was like a case that they, they oversaw. That was the most exciting one uh, that, they, that they looked over. And Alexander Hamilton actually gloated. He gloated in the Federalist Papers that it is the weakest of all three of the governmental branches. May 28, 1788, Alexander Hamilton and the Federalists, quote, you know, and the problem was people were worried that the court, the Supreme Court, would end up being a monarchical branch of government, that they would end up being basically in charge of everything. And he says, the judiciary is beyond comparison the weakest of the three departments of power. It can never attack with success either of the other two branches. Well, clearly that's no longer the case. No, it is not. Right, and then here's, here's what did it. Chief Justice John Marshall. Chief Justice John Marshall came in in the 1803 Marbury versus Madison case. Chief Justice Marshall decided that the Supreme Court has the power to deem federal laws constitutional or not. And of course, this made Thomas Jefferson just livid. He was livid over this. He said, if this decision stands, the Constitution has become a suicide pact. Under this construction, the, 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 the court is now a despotic branch of, of government. He, he, uh, he, he wrote to, uh, to Abigail Adams, he said, uh, who was a friend of his at the time, uh, even though he wasn't talking to her husband, he wrote to her and he said, uh, under this, the Constitution has become a thing of wax to be molded in the hands of the judiciary. Boy, Jefferson, really good with those words, huh? <laughs> called it a de they called it despotic. 
despotic. And, and I mean, realistically, the courts granted their own power. That's really what they did. In 1803, they granted themselves power. And we, the people, just went, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. To, we're we're going to watch this game where, like, 22 dudes pile on top of each other to get, like, a leather ball with our hands. <laughs> We're thinking about calling it football. What do you guys think? <laughs> and it's you know, people running into and away from each other, all in relationship to the movement of a ball. Yes, which I feel like very exciting. Definitely something that we should pay more attention to. <laughs> USA, USA. USA. <laughs> yeah, but look, despite Jefferson's poetic and justified anger that would have given Shakespeare a run for his money, the courts didn't overturn this ruling, right? I mean, this is basically like a genie granting its own wishes, you know? And like the first thing they wish for is unlimited wishes. That's really <laughs> what they did. But really, I mean, there, therein lies the truth about the power of the courts, right? It's all wishful thinking. That's really where the power of the courts lies. It lies in wishful thinking. If we, the people, decided that a ruling of a court was a bad idea and pushed back against the courts, look, there's nothing nine geriatrics can do against the 99%, you know? And, and some of us were, are young and filled with all of our essential vitamins and minerals. I eat a lot of General Mill cereal in the morning. That's not true. I don't eat, I eat candy. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but, but Jefferson was right about the court, right? About them being despotic and that they turned the Constitution into a ball of wax and molded it to what they want. Most of the landmark cases uh, that the court has decided on deal with constitutional rights. That's primarily what they deal with. And as in all things, it has led to some pretty great things. And a lot of times, shit that they're trying to just sweep under the rug and pretend that it never happened. You know, it's basically like the 80s. Nobody wants to remember the 80s, you know? <laughs> it was a coke fuel decade and too many fans of glam, glam rock, which is a genre I learned about this week for this joke. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placon, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on what, when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.